Good morning. Good morning. My name is Romeo Bhatia. I'm a student nurse practitioner. How are you today? Good. What's your full name? Manjit Paul. What's your date of birth? 09-27-1971. Okay. So today I'm going to record abdominal assessment video for my school here at the State University and it will be uploaded on the YouTube and if uh, it will be used by my instructor to grade it. Are you giving me the consent to go ahead and record this video? Yes. All right, I'm gonna ask you to lay down, please, and I have a pillow for your head, so you will be comfortable. I'm gonna have one pillow. I can put this uh, under your, behind your knees, because when we put the pillow behind your knees, uh, and that will, uh, all right. So this pillow behind your knees will help you relax the abdominal muscle, okay? So, first of all, I'm gonna look at the general appearance of the patient. Uh, so uh, I will be looking at your general, you know, overall uh, skin. I will be listening to your bowel sound. I will be uh, pressing on your abdomen to see if there's any tenderness, masses. And while at the last, we will be looking at the uh, kidneys, okay, if there's any tenderness. So first of all, I'm looking at asking the patient, go ahead and pull up your shirt. In general, in the hospital setting, uh, usually the patients have a gown and ask that I can ask them to pull it up or I can, uh, ask the patient them to pull it up or I can uh, if they're comfortable me doing it and then I can do it for them whatever makes my patient comfortable so uh, shirt above the xiphoid process and I'm not going to expose his private area uh, and um, this is uh, at the suprapubic area so first I'm going to look at his general appearance uh, looking at uh, the eyes I'm going to compare the eye color with the overall skin color the, under the sclera, I'm going to assess, no yellowish discoloration noted. If there's a yellowish discoloration, no yellowish discoloration in the overall skin. If there's yellow discoloration, that is an indication of jaundice, which is negative in my patient's case. Number two, I am going to be looking at the symmetry of the abdomen. I'm going to be looking for any masses, any erythema, bruising, pulsations, any redness, any protruding hernia, and ascites, stri, uh, usually in the woman, you know, when they get the pregnant, this abdominal muscles get stretched, so they have a stri, like silvery gray uh, on the abdomen, and if those are uh, bluish, those are uh, indication of uh, like Cushing's syndrome. My patient's abdomen is flat, uh, Contour, I looked at the contour, it's a symmetrical, no masses, no lesions, no redness, no bruising, no pulsations, and um, no hernia noted. No dilated veins either. Number two is I'm going to be auscultating. I'm going to be auscultating, listening to the bowel sounds in all the four quadrants. Starting from the right side, right lower quadrant, right upper, I'm going to move on to the left upper and left lower. I should hear the gurgles and clicks. Those should be 5 to 34 bowel sounds are normal per minute. 5 to 34 per minute bowel sounds are normal in each quadrant. And uh, if it's less than 5, those are considered hyperactive. And if it's more than 34, it's considered hyperactive. So I'm going to be starting from the right side with the diaphragm of the stethoscope. I'm hearing the clicks and the gurgles. Right upper quadrant, moving on to the left upper quadrant. Gurgles and clicks. Moving on to the left lower quadrant. Gurgles and clicks. So my patient's balsams are normal active time four all quadrants. All right. And then I'm going to be uh, listening to the arteries. The iota, I'm going to be listening to the <coughs> arteries here, 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 and the femoral arteries. So first of all, I'm going to listen to the renal artery bilaterally, right, left, with the diaphragm and the bell. There should be no right side of the renal artery and 
and next I'm going to be listening to the iliac artery using the diaphragm. Using the diaphragm and the bell. And now again same thing on the left side, renal artery with the diaphragm, uh, iliac, iliac artery and with the bell okay. and now I'm going to move on to the femoral artery we can not expose the patient on here over his clothes with the diaphragm on both sides and the bell on both sides no pulsations no bruit uh, noted on assessing the renal iliac or femoral arteries uh, the next step is the precaution precaution should be usually done before the palpation <coughs> i mean auscultation should be done before the precaution so now i'm going to go ahead and move on to the precaution which will be using uh, my hand uh, lifting my other fingers up starting from the right side I should be able to hear the timpani or the tonus. Timpani is a sound that is usually heard over the hollow organs and gas filled organs and the tonus is usually heard over the solid structures so I'm going to start from the right lower quadrant tympanic timpani moving on to the right upper timpani Timpani, left upper, hearing the timpani, timpani, timpani. Over here, I can also assess the bladder right now because uh, if the bladder is empty, it's usually the tympanic sound. But if the bladder has like more than 600 urine, it should be dull. So my patient already emptied the bladder. I'm going to be assessing his bladder here. So it's empty, it's tympanic. <clears throat> and now I'm going to be precussing the liver on the right side in the right costal margin in the right mid clavicular line. So I'm going to start assessing the liver, precussing the liver, tympanic, member, tympanic, I hear tympani, tympani, and over here I hear the dullness. So I'm going to mark the line here and then from the top I'm going to be starting from the mid clavicular line like a the nipper line I'm going to be hearing timpani 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 and over here it's changing into the dullness so I'm going to mark this line over here and I will be checking the size of the liver span uh, checking the liver span 6 to 12 centimeter is normal and bigger than 12 centimeter is a sign of liver enlargement and I'm going to measure with the scale in centimeters from the bottom line to the top line and my patient's liver span is 7 centimeter which is considered normal so after precussing the liver I'm going to be uh, precussing the spleen and then uh, we on the left side left costal margin is the spleen and uh, left uh, ag across the left axillary line on the left costal margin on the left anterior uh, axillary line so I will be able to hear the tympanic sound go ahead and turn to the side sir please okay all right you're gonna be so slow left lower costal axillary line be hearing for the liver normal sign is tympanic uh, go ahead and take a deep breath for me please see i hear a tympani tympani tympanic tympanic so on the left side spleen it's a tympanic membrane uh, i was able to hear the tympanic sound i'm sorry okay go ahead and lay on your back so i precuss the liver i precuss the spleen <coughs> abdomen uh, my patient's bulsons are 
normal, uh, liver span was measured, spleen was auscultated, uh, precursed. And now next thing I'm going to do is a palpate. If the using the one hand is the light palpation, which I'm going to do, uh, starting from the right side of the quadrant of the abdomen, and starting light palpation, I'll be looking for any tenderness, uh, muscle resistance, any masses, any um, discomfort the patient have. I'm gonna, I should observe the patient's face, uh, moving into the all the quadrants. So, do you have any pain, sir? No. All right, and now I'm gonna use the deep palpation technique using the two hands, one hand and the fingers of the other, uh, on the other hand, starting from the right side again. And I'm gonna be looking for again masses, any resistance, any tenderness. I'm moving on to right upper, moving on to the left upper, and then I'm gonna move on to the right, left lower quadrant. I will be also looking at the patient's face. No discomfort noted. So <coughs> upon that patient, uh, no tenderness, no resistance, no masses observed okay and the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, after the palpation I'm gonna be uh, checking the liver size okay the side of the liver um, if we ask uh, you know it's liver as we know it's on the right side uh, on the lower intercostal I'm gonna be using a hooking technique and I'm gonna ask him to take a deep breath when he take a deep breath his, uh, take a deep breath, sir. I should be, so this is a hooking technique. Uh, okay, all right. When he takes a deep breath and exhale, uh, he takes a deep breath, then I should be able to, his liver should be uh, touching the pads of the fingers of my hand. So I use the hooking technique and uh, liver is long, tender, um, soft, margins, and same thing will be checking for the spleen. Okay, I'm gonna support him. Okay, and checking for the spleen here. Okay, take a deep breath. Okay, exhale. Okay, exhale, you can exhale, sir. Right, so if um, there's no tenderness on the spleen, if there's any tenderness noted on the left side when we're checking for the spleen, that's uh, you know the spleen is enlarged that's a sign of splenomegaly but it's normal in the case of my patient now moving on to the special test the first special test is uh, fluid wave test where i'm going to ask my patient put his hand in the mid abdomen and divide the portion and yeah and i'm going to be pushing from the right side to the left side and when I push if we have abdominal fluid or ascites I should be able to see the waves on this side that means the fluid is shifting from the right side to the left side thank you sir and after that so it's negative in my patient's case so he have no ascites no dilated veins and as we all know the ascites is a, because of the portal hypertension that's an indication of liver cirrhosis the next test I'm going to do is uh, Murphy's test to rule out acute appendicitis. In the Murphy's test, I am going to be looking on the, pushing on the area where the patient complains of pain, usually on the right upper quadrant. So when I push on the patient, and I'm going to ask him to take a deep breath, when he inspires, he's not able to inspire. If he's not able to inspire, that's an indication of a positive sign of acute cholecystitis so here i'm gonna push on the right right here on the right upper quadrant where the patient complained of pain ask him to take a deep breath go ahead take a deep breath sir all right my patient was able to take a deep breath so he is negative for acute cholecystitis but in case if they have positive acute cholecystitis patient have a difficulty in hitting the breath okay and that's the murphy sign and the next one is uh, the I'm gonna do is the McBurney's point, McBurney sign. That is to rule out acute appendicitis. And the McBurney's sign, we will be going from the right iliac 
interior uh, supa interior two inches so here's the iliac crest now moving it two inches from the right iliac superior i'm gonna be pushing uh, deeply on the patient i'm gonna release it quickly once i release it quickly there should be a reed bone tenderness patient complain of a pain when i release it quickly so that's if if patient complain of a pain I, when i release quickly that's the indication of the positive uh, appendicitis so here i'm going to perform the test iliac rest two inches from the anterior superior spine and here's a burning point i'm going to push deeply and i'm going to release it quickly did you feel any pain no okay so that is a negative signs of appendicitis Alrighty. now i'm going to check for severe tenderness severe tenderness we do for the uh, kidneys and uh, for the pyelonephritis all right so if you can go ahead and sit up pull your shirt down uh, go ahead and sit up uh, or you can go ahead and stand here for me so in the bag i'm going to pull his shirt from the back up i'm going to be looking at the cva cva point right here okay cva point right here and i will be uh, uh, right here there's a direct pressure i can apply or indirect pressure so direct pressure is when i do this he should have a pain if there's any positive sign and indirect pressures i'll put my hand here then i will push on the cv region i put the direct pressure and then if he complains of any pain that is a sign of that he has some kind of uh, pyelonephritis going on all right thank you so much sir and uh, it's at the cost of vertebral region Alrighty. you can have a seat and thank you so much and do you have any questions for me uh, no thank you Thank you so much for letting me record this video. Okay.